Hey, before we get into it, I have a bunch of new dates announced. We are doing the Melbourne Comedy Festival from the 9th of April until the 21st of April, every single night except for Mondays. Then we've got some new dates, Albury on the 2nd of May, Sydney on the 10th and the 11th of May. Then we have Newcastle on the 19th of May. Then we're going to Tassie. We've got Hobart and Launceston on the 21st and 22nd of June. The Adelaide show just sold out. We added a late show on the 28th of June. I don't know if we're going to add more. Grab tickets to that one. Ballarat on the 13th of July, Warnable on the 19th, and then Shepparton as well. Loosebeers.com, more dates announced soon. Keep harassing me. We'll keep adding them. Let's get into the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode three, two, four of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. It's still funny, and it will remain funny for another five episodes, and then I won't be able to do it anymore. Uh, Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I have been running around going to the doctors and getting tests done and getting psychologically evaluated because... Look, I might be on a TV show, basically is what's happening. Uh, and, uh, and, and dude, I've been just getting tested. I, I had to do a full psychological evaluation uh, and, uh, and an STI test to go on a TV show. They're like, Lewis, we'd like, you to have, we'd like you to be on this TV show, but we just wanted to make sure that you don't have AIDS and you're not going to kill yourself. And I went, look, I can make a pretty strong promise on one of those two things. I'll let you guess. Uh, <laughs> But dude, I've never had to. Have you ever had to do the the, the piss test? Yes. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. I had to. Like if, just pissing into a cup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had to go and get all my, all my bloods done. I had to get an ECG done to make sure that I that I won't have a spontaneous heart attack, mm. uh, which uh, which you know is is very likely because I've had the bloody jab. Um, but <laughs> I, I had to do a piss test, right? So here's I'm. Um, so I'm so not smart. I go to the doctors and uh, they order all these tests for me. And, uh, and she goes, and you can just go down to the, uh, the, the clinic and then they'll take your blood and then you can do a wee. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I just went home and then I was like, all right, now I need to go to the clinic. The clinic was next door to the doctors. And I was like, oh, fuck. Now I got to go all the way back there. Before I go, I really need to wee. So I'll wee. Oh. And then I get to I get there and they're like, all right, we'll do your bloods. They take my blood and then they do the ECG and then they go, all right, so uh, here's your little wee cups and uh, you can go into the bathroom. I was like, oh, I weed before I came here. And she looked at me like I was a fucking idiot. And you know what? She had a huge point. So then I felt stupid. And then, like, the next day, she's like, all right, well, you're going to have to wait till next morning because the wee has to be in you for a while before you do it. So it has to be in the morning before you've had food. I'm like, whatever. I do that. I fill up. When you did the wee test, where did you do it? Because it's pretty difficult. I had to fill up two cups, and I only had one wee. So you had to interrupt the flow a couple of times. So where did you wee? Because initially, right, your first thought is like, oh, bathroom, like toilet. But where, where did you do it? Because I just did it at the doctor. Like I just went to the toilet there. Right. That's where I've only ever done it. I was, yes, yeah, so I was doing it at home, so I had my options. So I was thinking, where am I going to do this? I didn't want to do it in the toilet because I was just worried about, because I've- Pissing in the toilet bowl. <laughs> just pissing everywhere. Because I have two cups, I've got two hands, one hand's preoccupied aiming, the other hand's like trying to juggle cups. I don't have a bench to hold the cups oh. in my toilet. So I just did it. You just I would just grab the two cups in one hand, both in each hand. Yeah. And then just slide it in and yeah. kiss like that. Do you know what I'm saying? It's probably not a very good Put your you you're talking about putting your penis in the cup. Into the cup. They were really small. They were only about this big. So there wasn't oh. enough room for piss and penis. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So if I had a long cup, that makes so much sense. But they gave me like a couple of shot glasses oh. <laughs> and were like, fill these up. Because yeah. that's what I thought would happen is I would get like a, a tube long enough for penis and piss, but there was only room for one or the other. <laughs> so I was like, where am I going to do this? Because... And it also was like I had to fill one up to the very top and then the other one only halfway. 
So I'm worried about having enough wee to fill up one and then half of the other. So I'm like, which one do I do first? I was overthinking it massively. Uh, so I just decided to get fully naked and I did it in the shower. <laughs> which I think was genius because I made a, I would have made a huge mess. But luckily I was in the shower, so I was able to fill up my cup and then have a shower after. Oh, great. That's good. But then I had this... I had a look at the like the instructions and uh, I did the Wii and then I was like, all right, well, what do I do now? Like, can I put it in the fridge? Can I drink it later? Can I, del- when do I have to actually give it to them? Uh, and uh, my particular test, I had to give it to them within like 30 minutes of putting it in the cup, which I didn't know. I just woke up and I was like, I need to Wii. Now's a good time to, to do this. Yeah. So I fill the cups up. Uh, by the way, this is the whole hour of this episode. If this is turning a few people off, it's time to leave. Uh, last last week's episode was quite good, and there's a Patreon episode out as, as well. If you if you can't handle this, this is the show. Uh, so I uh, I've got my my two cups of warm piss in my little bag, and I filled out the form, uh, and then I'm like, okay, I need to I need to drop it off now. So I book an Uber, and it's like the, I didn't know this, but the place that I was going to, it's a chain. Clinical labs, they're everywhere. I didn't know this. So I just type into my Uber app, clinical labs, because I'm like, oh, I could walk, but it was about 35 degrees. So I thought, I don't want my piss to evaporate. I feel like that would tamper with the results. You know, just, just you want to deliver warm piss? You don't want to deliver hot piss. <laughs> That's what is my logic. So I get in an Uber and the Uber pulls up and then I'm like, fuck, I can't just get in an Uber because they give you a clear bag and you've got a two clear shot glasses full of piss. I can't like get in the Uber and be like, hey man, and sit it on my lap because they're already fussy about taking drinks and stuff in, in Ubers. Like sometimes people don't want you to bring a coffee in the back of the car. Other times people don't want you to be eating food. So I just felt like I wouldn't really want to risk it by bringing like a bag of piss that he could definitely see. So I chucked it in a Coles bag, like the paper one. So I'm like, here we go. That's good. Now he has no idea what I'm delivering. It could be an organ. And I go to the clinical labs and then I I get out of the car and it's the wrong one. It's not the one that I did my blood test at. So I'm like, oh, fuck. So then I, now I'm panicking because I'm like, I have to deliver it within half an hour. 10 minutes have already gone by. So now I'm fucking panicking and I can't remember the specific one that I actually needed to go to. Now, in hindsight, all I needed to do was just think about where I go to the GP because it was next door to the GP. But you know when you're panicking and you've got a bag of hot piss and you're like, I need to, I need to drop this off now. I'm kind of embarrassed. This is, I'm freaking out. I've got the producers of the TV show going, hey, we need your piss, right? So I go, all right, I just type in another clinical labs, jump in another Uber, go to the, another wrong one. And now I'm fucking, now I'm really panicking because it's been another 10 minutes. I've only got 10 minutes to drop off my wee because you write on the bag when you weed. And if I get there and it's like, oh, I did it at 1.30 and I've got there at 2.10, they'll be like, we don't want this. It's undrinkable. Go home. So I'm like, fuck, now I'm really panicking. So now I call Jazz and I'm like, where the fuck is this actual place? And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm jumping in another Uber going to the right one. I finally get to the right one and I drop, I go there and I'm like, I've got five minutes left to spare. And I give him, I give the guy the wee. Uh, and he goes, uh, do you want the Coles bag? I went, nah, you, you can keep it. That's no longer reusable. That's had hot piss in it. All good, man. Don't worry about it. And you know what's really funny as well is like when you're in the waiting room of the of the lab's place that, that takes blood and piss and poo sometimes. Everyone in the waiting room you go in, you take your number and then you sit down and you wait to get your blood taken is what, or an ECG is the most common one. But when you show up like really sweaty and stressed looking 
with a brown paper bag. Everyone looks at you and goes, that guy's got poo. <laughs> that guy's got a poo in that bag. Ah, poo bag. And it's a little bit embarrassing and everyone judges you and then they and then they realize, oh, this is silly because that's what I'm here for as well. <laughs> so it's so it's like it's really like a, a very humbling experience to walk into a room and have a bunch of people go, that's poo bag guy. That's the guy with poo in his bag. Or we maybe, or potentially an organ. Ha <laughs> ha. And then I look at them and I go, brothers, sisters, we are we are all poo bag guys in this scenario. So I drop it off and then uh, and then I get a text from Jazz going, oh, clinical labs is a chain. You can just drop it off at any one of them. You don't have to go to a specific one. And I went, ah, that would have been good to, to know three Ubers ago. How much did that cost you? Heaps. Yeah. Just heaps. But you know what? <laughs> Build the TV show. <laughs> Sucked in. Oh, yeah, I had to take three Uber trips. It was a hassle. So, yeah, I can't say anything else about it, but um, but what I will say is trust me um, when it comes to the TV show. Uh, you and I went to went, went out for dumplings. Yep. Our, yep. Good, our good friend, Uncle Whitey. Dumpling Eats in uh, Frankston. We went to Dumpling oh, Eats in Frankston, and, and Keelan, you go there all the time. Constantly. You're a frequent visitor. How many times have you gone there this week? Uh, this might, I'll be gone tonight again for the third time this week. That's heaps to go anywhere. Yeah. Three times, for, especially for dinner. Yeah. Is, are you going by yourself? No, no, no. I'm always going with someone new. You're just bringing the neighborhood. <laughs> so they must love you. It's like when I when I went bowling, I'd just pick everyone in my life and I'd go with them individually. Yeah, yeah. And and the to the point where the woman running the bowling alley just gave us both discounted lanes yeah. and shoe hikes. She does was like, when we come back. That's awesome. Yeah. We love that. Yeah, I love Dumpling Eats in Frankston. Dumpling Eats in Frankston. They must have a love-hate relationship with you because on one hand, you're a brilliant customer and you're spreading the word about Dumpling Eats Frankston, and you're always bringing new people, which brings money into the door. Right. So for those reasons, they must love you. However, yep. when we were there, yeah. you were uh, very argu- uh, very loudly <laughs> arguing and insisting that this place was Vietnamese, uh, which they're certainly not, because dumplings are not a Vietnamese food. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and I could just, I don't know if you could see this, but I could see the guy going... And, I, and you go, no, nah, they're Vietnamese, dude. But that really, that's what you get for opening any kind of Asian cuisine place okay. in Frankston right. is you're going to have a bunch of people from Frankston going, I don't care if they're serving sushi. He's fucking Chinese. I can defend myself on this because the place, this place has been here for years, like decades. Yeah, yeah. I used to go here a lot yeah. when it was a Vietnamese restaurant. Right, yeah. And then in December, it shut for like six weeks. It yeah. opened back up as a Chinese restaurant with exactly the same menu. And and obviously, the people running it look the same. No, they is don't. Is what you're saying. Actually. Yeah. Uh, different owners. Yeah. And I just got caught up in the fact that it used to be Vietnamese. Yeah. And couldn't... couldn't so what you're it. saying is you really don't like change. <laughs> is you're like, oh, it used to be a Vietnamese restaurant, so that's how it's always going to be. Sorry. Sorry, guys, you're Vietnamese. What's, well, what's your name? Wei? Sorry, it's actually Deng. Yeah, similar to the, the happy ending place I went to, I just ignore all the warning signs that say it's a Chinese place, yeah. a Vietnamese place. Sorry, mate. I don't care what the fuck your name is. I'm calling you Nguyen <laughs> or Nguyen. How good is the Chi- how good is the Chinese place though? It is dumpling eats. It is really really good for for all Vietnamese people who have figured out a Chinese cuisine. It's quite nice. It's the exact same menu, so you can understand why I get confused. Yeah, yeah, of course. Especially considering your your checkered racist past, I can <laughs> absolutely understand why why you would feel like that. And and they have pho on the menu. What the pho? Um, <laughs> yeah. Look, look. It's, it's good. You should go. And tell them Keelan sent you. And tell them that they're Vietnamese. Don't do, Don't that. do that. That would be very racist. But but enjoy Dumpling Eats in Frankston. Yeah. It's quite nice. Oh, that's all you wanted to bring up about that? That's it. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was very funny to, to to hear you just yelling in the restaurant about how Vietnamese they are while they while there was like the 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 fucking Chinese New Year dragon in the corner and the and the, the cat waving its paw. You're like, they're Vietnamese, dude. Maybe if they had like uh, a trap door that if, if you stepped on it, you would fall into it and there's there were sticks 
covered in human poo, maybe then I'd be I would understand why you would think that it's Vietnamese. I'm not very observant. <laughs> Man, you should have you should have, you should have seen they had a bunch of Uyghurs out the back trapped. <laughs> it, well, it was obviously a Chinese place. All right, guys, maybe we shouldn't have said the business name if we were going to go and tell all of these jokes. We might have to edit that out. Um, Dumpling eats. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all it's super Chinese. It's really good. Uh, are you excited for the Royd Olympics? Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. The steroid Olympics is finally happening. This is something that I've been an adv- a very loud advocate for. On this podcast for years, I've been I've been wanting the steroid Olympics. Why not? I don't see why there can't be a steroid division. They have a natural division of uh, bodybuilding, and I think that's more exciting than the steroid bodybuilding. I think that's really cool. Why not? I reckon that the Olympics is the the official Olympics is missing out on like a incredible brand opportunity, like a money making move. Like why wouldn't you? Just, I reckon it makes perfect sense. Roid up all these athletes. It looks exciting. Although, right, they've got they've got weightlifting, they've got swimming, they've got running, they've got all of the classic Olympic events, which I'm very excited for. However, there was one event on there that I was like, I don't know if we should be doing that. And that was, they have like boxing and some martial arts. I don't think you should be having roided up people fight each other. Because here's the thing, I was thinking about this, steroids would obviously make you much stronger and much faster, right? So they're going to make you punch harder, but steroids are not going to make your brain less susceptible to an aneurysm, right? Maybe. Like, how though? There's not, there's no muscle in there, like it's your skull. So like having the, the biggest shoulders and, the, and a massive lat to like throw the hardest punch, great, but... I don't think, I don't, sorry, I had to put the dog um, down. Um, I don't understand, like, why you would want to risk that. I don't want to see a roided guy punch someone in the face. I feel like someone's going to die. Although maybe it's a lot safer. Like, the Olympic martial arts is a lot safer. Everyone has to wear, like, the helmets and the pads and the knee pads and stuff. That's why no one gives a fuck about it at all. Because it's more about sp- scoring points than putting the other guy in the hospital. You know, it's much more honourable. No one wants to watch that. I can't wait for the swimming. The swimming is going to be sick. They've they've just locked in their first, or f- from what I understand, like their first big athlete, and it's an Australian guy, ex Olympian. So he's ex- two world record holder. Ex world record holder, he and might still be the current. What's his name? James Magnuson. James Magnuson. Oh yeah, I know him. He's super famous. Yeah. He's come out. He's accepted a million dollars to compete. He's gonna do steroids, and he reckons he's gonna break the record within a couple of months. Yeah. Which is so sick. He said, "Juice me up to the gills," because he swims. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm super excited for that. And he's like, uh, I think you know what is cool about it about the steroid Olympics, if it works, it kind of gives older athletes another 10 years of a career, which I think is awesome because once, you know, I I mean, I don't understand the science of aging, but I imagine it's a big reason is just because you stop producing as much testosterone naturally, your body slows down a little bit. If you can put steroids in people, you can, you know, do the Olympics smash the world record naturally and then retire from the natural Olympics, then I can start taking endorsement deals with the Royd Olympics. You know, I feel like all it needs is like a few years of no one dying and everyone's going to be cool with it. I think I'd go to see it. I'd I'd go, I'd pay to see that. I just want to see like, what does, cause like you look at the Olympic swimmers, right? Uh, or any of the Olympic athletes, like the even the the heavyweight weightlifters, and you look at their bodies, and you're like, what the fuck? The only body that we know is made with steroids is like the bodybuilder. I want to know like what a fully unashamed, roided to the gills, like what does a swimmer look like? What does a, a like a like? Are you going to have like a 300 kilo heavyweight weightlifter? Is that what we're going to get? 
Like, what actually happens when the athletes don't have to hide it at all? Like, those strongman competitions, are they roided up? The ones where they do the, the Atlas Stone stuff? I assume that they are. I'm not sure. Like, I want to know what a, what Usain Bolt looks like on steroids and how fast he can actually... Like, what is the actual peak of human speed? Because... And, and this is an interesting thing. If it really does work and if... Because um, all... You know what? All it's going to take is, like, some dude we've never fucking heard of in our life running 100 meters in, like, eight seconds. And it goes up viral on TikTok and no one gives a fuck about the, the Olympics anymore. Would you become bigger or leaner if you were doing... I don't know. I, it pr- Probably both. Sam Sullick swimming. <laughs> yeah, like I want to see Sam Sullick doing 100 meters. Like that's... Who knows what, what they're going to look like. Um, You might just end up getting like a bunch of guys that are like my size... Yeah. Um, competing like six foot eight dudes doing everything because I feel like a big reason why people my size don't reach like the peak is like the food you got to eat because there's like one swimmer who's my height and have you seen him? I think he, I, I think he's American and he just looks fucking ridiculous. He's an Olympic swimmer. He's my height because I, uh, I wanted to like look at people my height who are like in peak physical condition. And the only people you can look at is like basketballers. But I looked at like swimmers who I think have like the the most aesthetic body. So I looked up like Olympic swimmers my height and the guy looks terrifying. Google six foot eight swimmer. You'll find him. Um, But I reckon, yeah, maybe every single event will be Dudes that look like me. Dude, imagine the women's division. <laughs> James Magnuson is your size. Is he? Yeah. Maybe that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah, he's just a fucking freak though. Yeah. So that, that's what I mean. Like this, like swimming, once you get like the record down to like milliseconds. Yeah, I think it was him that I'm talking of. Like, is he actually faster than everyone else? Or is he the exact same speed? He's just like a few inches longer. So he reaches the end quicker. Do you know what I mean? It's probably both. But I think it's so sick. I want to see the steroid Olympics. Imagine the women's division, dude. Like you won't be, you will not be able to tell the women's and the men's division apart at all. I Like I want to see, remember when that, that Chinese swimmer got out of the pool and she had a hairy back? And everyone was like... There's no fucking way this chick's natural. And this happened years ago. Chinese swimmers got out of the pool and they like smashed the record. And people were like, mm, I've never seen a Chinese woman with a hairy back before. And I think, I, I feel like they did get caught for using steroids because they forgot to fucking shave their back. That's what I want to see. I want to see the woman's like s- swimming division getting out of the pool looking like fucking werewolves and they've just demolished all of the men's Olympic records. That would be so sick. I feel like if it works and if it's filmed properly and there's enough money put behind it and no one like dies during training or during an event or after the Olympics, the steroid Olympics, I it would be really interesting to see if it affects the regular Olympics. Yeah, I think it would. Mm. They should legalize steroids and then I'll compete. That's the thing. It would, yeah, it would make a lot of, uh, you know what? It might make, uh, I guess it just makes the, 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 it's probably a bad thing. Like overall for humanity to have the steroid Olympics, because it's just going to show every fucking 35 year old dude what he could do, you know? And, and I feel like a lot of society, the reason why it functions is because a lot of people, once they hit 35, they quit just whatever they're doing and they accept, all right, this is my life. I'm going to pay my mortgage. There are, I reckon there's a lot of 35 to 39 year old dudes out there that really do not need to see a 33 year old guy break the world record for swimming with steroids because all of a sudden he's going to go, 
it's not too late. I could still be a dancer. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we've lost one concreter. Mm. And then that's, that's going to cascade across the entire world. <laughs> like, that's really what I want to see. I want to see the women's division steroid Olympics diving. I think that taking steroids for the diving division would probably make you a lot worse because obviously with diving, you want to make a smaller splash as possible. And if all of these tiny little Chinese women have giant clits, I feel like it would create a huge splash zone, which some people would be really into. Dude, I can't wait. When is it happening? Can you Google when they think they'll have... Because I think it's Peter Thiel, the billionaire, who's yeah. like funding it or kicking it off. They, they must be figuring out if it's actually legal to like do. Because if steroids are kind of, kind of illegal everywhere, from what I understand... I don't think that they have... Um, they've got a date yet. Because even like the Olympics, the Olympic Committee are tearing them to shreds. Oh no, enhanced games to launch in 2024. Wow. But that doesn't mean kind of anything. Yeah, I if I were if I were like an owner of the Olympics, I would be freaking out because it would just like once you have the enhanced games and stuff, it's like it just kind of makes your 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 thing look obsolete. If there are dudes out there like in 4K, if they can if they can replicate the production value of the Olympics and like me as an average viewer opens up TikTok and I see Usain Bolt run a hundred meters in nine seconds. And then I see a fucking steroid freak, 37 years old, <laughs> do it in eight seconds. I'm like, well, this is cooler. So I care about this more. Yeah. This is sick. It's, it really, it, it'll be like a really big test of, of what we think is honorable because if you really think about it, steroids in sport are only viewed as bad because some people do them and then win. And that's cheating. And that's dishonorable and gross. But the minute you have like a viable option, especially with ex-Olympians, ex-record holders going over there and being like, fuck it, I love swimming. I love competing. This will give me another five to seven years of my career of doing what I love for money. Let's go. And I get to win and it's like legitimate. I don't have to feel bad. Fuck yeah, I'm doing it. So if you have a competition where steroids are the norm, like bodybuilding, for example, like no one looks at bodybuilders and is like, ah, you're cheating. I'm sure that when steroids started entering bodybuilding, there would have been that huge debate of like, oh, this guy's way too big. This is bullshit. This is cheating. But then everyone started doing it. So that's just what bodybuilding became. Maybe this is just what sport is going to become, you know? And then you might have this whole thing of like, if the enhanced games really works, the Olympics might just have to go, all right, we, we're going to have a steroid division. And it'll be like, once you retire from the regular Olympics, then you can enter into the steroid Olympics. But that'll be awesome. Like that'll be so sick to like, just watch some dude about to run a hundred meters in 7.95 seconds. And then just before he crosses the finish line, his heart explodes, mm. falls over and just like skids for 20 more meters. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it's probably not so much the sprinting stuff. That's impressive, but the endurance, like the 15 kilometer runs, are they doing those? I, I don't know. That's an assumption. Yeah. Like the long distance running. Because imagine that. Well, I wonder, I wonder if, would steroids help with those events? Yeah. If anyone knows this stuff, I would love to know. Like, because all I know is that steroids make you a lot stronger. Are they going to make you run longer oh, I can look and up. swim longer? I mean, I suppose so. It, it seems to be like just the magic wonder drug. I'd, yeah, I'd like to see a marathon on, on roids. Yeah, that, that'd be sick. Maybe they would have to... Imagine them just fucking sprinting 1,500 meters. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, that's that's uh, the thing, like... No, no. It does not improve cardio. <laughs> ah, okay. 
Right. But so that, that could be interesting though. They can improve speed and power and improve strength and endurance, but not not cardio. Yeah. Endurance. Right. That's so in but you would I don't know. I was gonna say that the more muscle mass you have, the faster you'll run, even if it's if it's for a long time. But if you look at those marathon runners, they're all skinny as fuck. Like it's actually more about it seems to be more about the efficiency at which your body can run and maintain its system and use energy rather than how much muscle you have. So maybe steroids doesn't help with that. But yeah, dude, I can't wait. I can't wait to see someone like like a like a woman who looks like Usain Bolt, like coming really close to the men's hundred meter dash record. And then like other dudes' hearts exploding and some some dude like punching a guy in the head so hard that his helmet explodes and his teeth end up embedded into the camera lens. That's why I definitely don't agree. They should not have fighting. No way. That's dangerous as fuck. That's like when I, whenever I watch the UFC and the heavyweights fight, I'm always like, they're so much stronger than obviously every other, like the women's division, for example, or the lightweight, the flyweights or whatever the fuck they're called. So why does it also seem like they get knocked out less? That's fascinating to me. Does being heavier and having more muscle make you less likely to be knocked out? I would have thought that there'd be no change. Like getting knocked out is getting knocked out and you just have like a tolerance to getting hit in the head. And that doesn't really change based on your fitness, but maybe not. Because that's why the women's fights are so exciting to me because they're not as strong, so they don't get knocked out as often. It appears. That might be bullshit, but that's what it looks like to me is that most of the women's fights go on for a while because they just can't, they're not strong enough to knock each other out other than some of the, the bigger women. Um, but yeah, I don't really know. Um, Taylor Swift is getting all this heat from being on the, on the Super Bowl. And uh, am I, I, I don't give a fuck. I think it's cool that yeah. people are like liking something. Yeah. I think it's cool. I, I've never, I've never, under, I don't understand the, the, the love for Taylor Swift, but I also don't understand at all the hate for her as well. Like I'm, I'm on, I'm right in the middle of like, yeah, she's got a few good ones. She doesn't have any spectacular ones, mm. but she also doesn't have any horrible ones. She's just like, oh yeah, I good on ya. Like I saw a, I saw a video just this morning on Twitter, uh, uh like X. going, sorry, on X of. Someone going, Taylor Swift has ruined a generation of women. And there was like an 11 year old girl with braces crying at the concert and singing along. It's like, she's 11? She's allowed to cry and have big feelings seeing her favorite fucking, oh, Taylor Swift is ruining a generation of women. Look at this 11 year old girl crying over something that an adult wouldn't. She's 11! Bitch is going to cry sometimes and you're going to go, oh, that's all right. And then you're going to laugh about it when she's out of earshot. <laughs> that's what an 11 year old does, you know? And then it's like the amount of times I've seen men cry at like sporting events, like 50 year old dudes go, oh, my team lost. It's yeah. like, bro, it's the same shit. Like sometimes you care about something and even though it's a little bit silly, you're going to get overcome with emotion, especially when you're in a, an arena with 100,000 people losing their shit. Like, dude, if we can uh, convince ourselves that we talk in tongues at church, you know? I've seen people faint at a church, and, and they really did faint. Like, that's how much they believed that they were going to faint. They actually did. It's like, yeah, the 11-year-old girl can cry seeing her favorite singer do a dance mm -hmm. even though she's not that good at dancing what do taylor swift and travis kelsey talk about money i there's, reckon they just count their money there's no way that he could relate to her with money mm. she That's takes a private jet to use the bathroom you know, being in the Super Bowl, you might as well be homeless on the street. What do Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift talk about? Sport? Because she seems to be a woman of few words and he seems to have an IQ of 63. Yeah, um, 
I was training and uh, I caught the ball today and we won the game. Wow. I feel like Taylor Swift <laughs> is uh, really just trying to get like a really genetically healthy baby out of Travis Kelsey. Like I feel like once you're at that level of billionaire superstardom, you just start looking at other people as tools to advance your gene pool. And an athlete is pretty good. But I feel like she she's looking at this guy celebrate after the Super Bowl and, and being like, ah, fuck. I know this guy's going to give me healthy kids, but is he also going to give me retarded kids? <laughs> what do they talk about? I couldn't imagine them sitting down alone, right, in their house for 20 minutes in between one of her concerts and private jet trips. I could not imagine them sitting down and being like, so how was work today? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I really had a good day at work, babe. We just, we ran some laps and coach told me to do push-ups, so I did. I feel like he yells all the time and she's like, Travis, we're, in, we're inside. Yeah, I know. My head hurts. Does your skull lever ever feel swollen, babe? <laughs> She's like, no, what do you mean? Oh, just every now and then my skull feels swollen. Usually after I run headfirst into a guy wearing armor. Well, that's all right. I'm wearing a helmet. It's probably nothing. Anyway, what did you do to work today? No, I actually killed a flight attendant for fun. Because my, my, uh, my private jet trip was 15 minutes so I had a bit of spare time. Cool. Did she suffer? Yeah, good. <laughs> There's, I just can't picture them having a conversation. No. You know, I saw that she's getting, she's trying to sue this person who's tracking her private jet. Mm. Taylor Swift taking a private jet everywhere is just so funny to me. I think it's very funny. Because Taylor Swift's fans will be like, we need to hold even Taylor Swift accountable for the amount of carbon emissions she puts into the atmosphere. But if those same people ever, ever saw her in traffic, they would Princess Diana that bitch instantly. Like, could you imagine if Taylor Swift was in traffic? It's, yeah, it's like when they shut down that whole town in, in New Jersey because she was at a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's that's why she has to take the private jet fucking everywhere. She's actually too famous to sit in traffic. She's like more famous than the president. Like her being, because here's the thing. If, if I was driving, and I know this is a stretch, but imagine I'm driving. I look to my left and I see Joe Biden. I'm not going to do anything crazy because I know he's surrounded by snipers who will kill me, Right. But if I saw Taylor Swift, you know, I might take a photo, tweet it, and then all of a sudden the, the, there's a traffic jam for a week because people would fucking follow her everywhere. But I do, I saw one, like the guy tracking her private jet. She took a private jet, like a 20-minute flight from here to there, mm. And people looked it up and it's a 35 minute drive. <laughs> and it's like, dude, she spent, I mean, $20,000 at least going 20 minutes here to there instead of driving. That's got to be hell. To live that life has got to be fucking absolutely horrific. Mm. I'm so glad that comedians never get that famous. It's, it's seemingly impossible. Like, you even look at Kevin Hart. No one's following Kevin Hart and screaming and shit like that. He'll have some paparazzi. He's got, like, some fans that quite like him. But that pop star fame has got to be hell. You wonder why they all go crazy. I, that's why. Because it's like, oh, I have to take the private jet 20 minutes because if anyone sees me in traffic, it's highly likely that I'm going to have over 100 people following me. And then by the time I get to my destination, those hundred people have tweeted and now there's going to be 2,000 people outside the front door of wherever the fuck I'm going. Like, she's coming to Melbourne and you're saying that you can't reserve, like, you, you have to reserve wherever you're going to have dinner. 
yeah. because there's going to be that many people in the city for her concerts that she's doing here that you can't even get dinner for the weekend without paying a deposit and making a reservation at places that normally never take reservations. Yeah. Yeah, because my birthday, I'm trying to go out with my friends for drinks. You're invited, but you're not coming. <coughs> um, and everywhere I have to book, I have to pay. Yeah. Everywhere I'm trying to book, rather, I have to pay. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy to me. So if you're free, come along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll think about it. <laughs> um, sounds sounds fun. <laughs> but you're going to the concert? Yeah, tonight. Oh, yeah. oh tonight. It looks sick. Although... I have seen like a mega pop star in their prime in Australia once. I saw Halsey and... Halsey? Yeah, Halsey. I said Halsey. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Some people, whatever. We'll leave that there. We'll leave that where it is. Um, I'll, I'll set that down where you put it down. And uh, if you want to come back to it, you can come grab it. Uh, but that's yours. That's not mine. Uh, and let that be known on the record that, that uh, I didn't touch it after he put it down. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I saw Halsey live and uh, she's a great singer, but I really, really got the sense that uh, she just couldn't do her show here because she had like one set piece that was really stripped down and then she had some screens that really didn't seem big enough for what she was trying to present. And then it looked like she had a bunch of cues and things like that that just didn't happen or eventuate and yeah. she didn't really know what to do and i feel like that's because you just can't bring like your thousand piece set from america to australia but maybe taylor swift can yeah i worked at the last taylor swift concert as a set builder and set pull apart did you yeah oh yeah i knew you at the time I, you just don't remember me telling you about it how, how long ago was this 2018 oh man yeah right so but it was like a full-on like TV media, like stage. Wow. It took like 300 guys, 12 hours to pull apart the stage. That's crazy. And that's when, when people are like that, those big shows, when people are like, why are tickets starting at a hundred dollars? It's like, cause so they have to get an paid. army of Keelans yeah. for 12 hours to build the stage. Everyone getting paid $50 an hour plus food. So wow. It's pretty expensive. That is mental. Yeah. But it's a pretty, it's a pretty legit, operation for her and <clears throat> yeah. i saw harry styles last year and he had a pretty pretty big set as well that's cool but he had one of those like 360 stages yeah so there's nothing really behind him he could just go up everywhere i wonder if those come from america or if they're like built here because how would you get them here you'd have to sh you'd have to put them on a boat wouldn't you yeah i think the taylor swift one is like f imported but i don't know that's crazy that makes all of that stuff that you, everything you've just said makes me so grateful to be a comedian <laughs> because literally whether I'm doing an RSL yeah. or a fucking arena, all I have to do is show up and go, is this thing on? Test, test, test. Uh, can you hear me up the back? All right. Is that, is that loud? Is that too loud? Is this too quiet? It's good. All right. I'll be back in an hour. That's it. I've I've done theaters. I've done RSLs. I've done everything in between. Uh, and I've seen people do arenas. I know I've got friends who've done arenas. You rock up and you go, ah, 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 test, test. This is how loud I'll be. This is how quiet I'll be. And done. I don't have to learn a dance. <laughs> I don't have to learn choreography. I don't have to sit down for a month with the set designer. I don't have to shell out millions of dollars to build the set. I don't have to sit down with the guy who's going to figure out what's going to be on the screen behind me and pay him $30,000 to create cool animations. I don't have to do hair and makeup. I don't have to do vocal exercises beforehand. I don't have to do anything. I just rock up and I go, yeah, so I had some thoughts about my penis recently. <laughs> Loosebeers.com. It's a brilliant show, but fuck. I'm not putting anywhere near as much effort as even a D-tier singer. <laughs> so, 
I'm excited for your Taylor Swift recap. I, you Me know what, too. you know what's gonna happen? This is one, I saw Lady Gaga with my mum when I was a teenager. Fucking phenomenal show. But God, I hated everyone else there. There was people behind me, girls, that was like, we were up on the balcony. She can't hear us. Fucking screaming, like peer, ear piercing screeches. Every song, multiple times during the song, to the point where my ears hurt, not from the music, from the chick behind me. It was horrific. Couldn't hear the fucking music. Lady Gaga couldn't hear it. It was just fucking with me and my mum. Mm. My mum turned around and told her to stop. And she didn't. So that, I feel like you're going to hate. Yeah, but they weren't like that at Harry Styles. I think they're going to be like that at Taylor Swift. Yeah, possibly. I think that's the thing. And also, everyone, all you're going to see, you're lucky you're tall. Who are you going with? My sister and Phoebe. All... Those girls are going to see. I mean, your sister might be all right. All Phoebe's going to see is people's phones. Yeah, I know. That's it. I, Whenever I'm at a, at a concert or a festival, I always loudly say to Phoebe, like, so glad I get to see the concert through someone else's phone. Yeah. And Does it make an impact? Yes. Good. Then they get embarrassed and they go, oh. God, it's fucking. Like, I understand getting like a 30 second clip. Yeah. I always do that. But fuck, people filming full songs is crazy. Mm. And whenever I see like videos of this and, and people complaining about it, there's always comments like, um, some of us have really bad memories and they can't actually remember the full concert. It's like, hey, dude, that's being a fucking human. No one has a photographic memory and can remember every single dance move that Taylor Swift did when they watched the fuck. Enjoy it. Mm. I feel like people who say that don't know what a memory is. It's not like, it's not like you sit down in your bed and you're like, oh, I'm going to replay the Taylor Swift concert. This is why I paid $200 so that I could relive. I'm going to sit here for two and a half hours. Oh yes. I remember the smell of, of when people started lighting up weed. I remember sitting here for 20 minutes waiting for the show to start. Like, that's not what a, what a memory is. That's a memory is you think back and you go, ah, that was fun. That was, that was a good time. Uh, but it was really annoying when I got bumped, but that's okay. They didn't mean it. <laughs> no one's like, oh yeah. Remember when she said this to me? And then the guy said like, that's yeah, that annoys me. Concert amnesia is what it's called. Is when you get too caught up in the concert that you actually forget the concert. Doesn't that just mean you had a good time? No, it's like a real thing, especially at like big pop star shows concert amnesia yeah. i feel like this is something that tiktok kids have invented to justify them filming for two hours on the fucking phone yeah that's maybe true. that's why they don't remember the concert because they viewed it through their fucking phone yeah concert amnesia have you ever looked at footage that you filmed on a concert from like 10 years ago and no. just gone this is unwatchable yeah. I saw Green Day when I was like 16 17 and the footage because my phone was so old yeah back then it's just unwatchable Maybe it's a little bit different now because because what you film on your phone is actually kind of watchable. Yeah, but that's true. I don't know. I just feel, I just feel like the trade off of like you're trading the experience that you're having right now for the privilege of watching it on a phone later a couple of times. Like that's yeah. such a like if you really think of it as a, as a as a experience exchange the experience that you're going to get watching that phone video a hundred times is in no way going to compare to you putting the phone in your pocket and actually being there and experiencing it and taking it in without worrying about filming it. I don't know. I feel like a, the, it, the trade-off is not there. Um, anyway... Miscellaneous bit at the end. If you want to send an email through to the podcast, send it to podcast at lewspears.com. Uh, this segment is uh, sponsored as always by Patreon. If you want to support the show, get early access to episodes, uh, join the Discord. You've got concert amnesia up here? Patreon.com slash Lou Spears. Tell us with fans who experience post-concert amnesia have may have better luck at her movie, experts say. Um, 
pretty much the advice is exactly what you just said. Just enjoy it. <laughs> just be in the moment and you won't and you won't experience it as much. Um, so experts say the best way to prevent post concert amnesia is to be present in the moment. Yeah, I feel like you're not you don't have concert amnesia, you're dissociating. Yeah. Like in like you're not in the moment. Like when you're there, you're fucking dissociating and you, you're pulling out your phone and you're just going like this. And it's like, I don't, things I film, I don't remember. Like I kind of noticed that pretty early on, like, cause I've traveled a lot and I've, you know, your, your first instinct is, oh, that's cool. I'll take a photo of it. Yeah. Now I don't do that at all. Um, and I, I remember shit a lot better. I love that it's because of my sleep, but like even since I've started sleeping well, uh, just, I've just noticing that the more I use my phone, the less I remember what the fuck I'm doing, where I am, uh, how I felt. Cause it, it numbs your brain. That's a, it's a huge coping mechanism. You pull the phone out. You're like, I'm not here anymore. I'm somewhere else. All right. Turns out we have no emails. Podcast at loosebeers.com. Send us an email. If you have a question, uh, if you need some life advice or a funny story that you would like uh, to be heard. So we're going to get out of here. Uh, we're going to continue on Patreon, patreon.com slash loosebeers. It is up right now. Uh, and uh, that's where you get a exclusive access to the Patreon episode uh, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. Come see me live. Uh, Melbourne from April 9th to uh, April 21. Then we have a bunch of new dates. I've got Albury on the 2nd of May. Then we're off to Sydney on the 10th of May and the 11th of May. Then Newcastle on the 19th. Then we've got Hobart on the 21st of June. Launceston on the 22nd. Then Adelaide. The first show has sold out on the 28th of June. We've added a late show. A second show on the 28th and that's filling up as well. Then we've got Ballarat in July. Warnable. Uh, and Shepparton as well. Those are on sale. There'll be more announced very soon. Loosebeers.com. Grab your tickets. I'll see you there, and I hope you have a shit one. Bye.